All right. Hi and welcome to Resolution Games. My name is Tommy Palm. I'm uh, the CEO and co-founder of uh, this studio situated in the heart of Stockholm, Sweden. Uh, with me today I have Mathieu Castelli, a uh, uh, French game, game designer. You moved your family here to Sweden uh, recently to start uh, to, to work here as, as a creative uh, director and uh, you pitched this this idea Blaston that we're gonna talk about to me and uh, you made a, a quick prototype during the summer and uh, we've been loving it ever since and then we're, we're soon about to launch and I thought we would uh, speak a little bit more about this so how, how did you come up with this idea from the beginning I think it's very natural in VR to be wanting to be next to the opponent, to try to have physical activity and VR for that is a dream. Because we, as you were writing on that Times article 2012, you were saying all those location-based games are great and we see it with the kids nowadays with Pokemon Go. This is great, you get the walking, you get some physical activity, you get some real world interaction, but in the end your eyes are glued to the screen and that limits a lot in the types of movements you can do with this. Running is almost out of the question. Any violent action, uh, it, it's going to be feeling frustrated. And so VR is unlocking that. It's unlocking this possibility of, of forgetting the device and being physically active. So that, so that was the, me. You know, you, you pulled me up from the mobile game world. You dropped me here in this creative studio and you said, OK, come on, I have ideas. But the first thing that struck me is that, that, that one to one scale matching of physical activity. And that's how Blaston came. If you combine the, the power in VR of feeling pre presence, everybody talks about that. So you feel you are next to someone. So you want to make a game that you're going to be next to your opponent. That's the first. Like ping pong is better for than tennis in that respect. And I don't think it's a hazard that there's two like hits in VR are, are ping pong games because ping pong has that vibe. And that, so that was one. And the other angle was, again, I was just saying, you get the natural sports motion in VR. So the two together very quickly narrowed down to, okay, let's just put people on a podium one meter apart. They, they almost can touch, but that almost makes, makes what we want. We don't want to go into sword fighting because then, then, then you feel the limitations of you know, sword to sword fighting, which can be sweaty. Like you, you try Iron Lights right now on the Quest Store. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you can make phys phys it's physical. Any super hot fan like me will, will tell you after half an hour you're sweaty. But the the contact is frustrating you never get that that force feedback range weapons are fine for that and so you get as close to as to as to not be frustrated by not being able to touch and that's that was the setup for the gameplay and we took it from there mm. and one thing i absolutely love when i when tested the prototype in the beginning is that it really made me feel like that scene in matrix where neo is dodging the bullets and and you can kind of feel the the super power of actually using your whole body and I, one of the things that I'm, I'm very excited about is if you see really uh, accomplished gamers on the pc or mobile side or or playing on the console they sit still it's not so fun to watch their interactions but in vr as you said you use the whole body especially if you design a game where you really need to move it's so much more enjoyable to to watch somebody play and, and you can see that they're having fun, right? They're laughing out loud, you're uh, moving and you're interacting. So um, this is one of the things that I think VR is absolutely fantastic for. And, and, and I'm sure we're gonna see a lot of things coming out in the future that kind of follows this paradigm of just being super intuitive as you use your hands in, in Blaston, you, you, you reach out and pick up guns. Um, and there is a fair bit of, of tactics in the game as well. Uh, can you can you talk a little bit about that? I will. I just wanted to riff on, on what you just said, which is, and, and it talks about the sports relation to VR. You know, when kids learn how to play a sport, the first thing you, you hear the coach try to, 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 to transfer to them is self-perception of their body positioning and self-perception self of timing as well. So they need to coordinate limb movements and center of mass that's that's key to unlocking your enjoyment of the sports and what's interesting um, discussing and playing now we've been playing blaston for a year and other games but it's, it applies to other games as well which is the number one skill you have to learn when you do those vr sports games in is perception of your own self in vr like how do you 
how does your avatar body follows your real world? Because it's not perfect matching. You can we don't have uh, belt sensors, we don't have uh, feet sensors. Not so yet. There, not yet. <laughs> it will come, yeah. and that will be perfect. Until then, and even in then, you know, like a, a kid playing judo has to learn or, or doing somersault. It's so hard to learn even your own body. Where is it? So this skill is the first thing you have to unlock in in those in those VR sports games. Um, in terms of tactics touching back on this the number one tactic will be where to position yourself as all vr game developers we are constrained by the average size available to to people in their homes and we we've narrowed it down to something like 1.5 square meters which is reasonable you push a few chairs and you quickly get that space but within that space there is a huge difference between being at the front or in the back one reason for this in in, in our game blaston is because the bullets have accelerate deceleration so if you're at the front and the opponent's at the front, the bullet will still be very fast. If you step back in a, in a more defensive position, the, the bullets decelerate and by then it's matrix style dodging. It's gonna be enough. You have the time to, to take an incoming salvo of, of bullets as a mini puzzle to solve very quickly. You know, okay, I'm gonna position myself like this. I'm gonna skip it here, turn around, grab and shoot. Yeah. And so that's the type of tactics we, we see that connect to the body. I, I love you know how bullet hell has been a, like a genre in arcade games for forever. And here you can really be in that and, and, and kind of make your body dodge between it. That's such a cool aspect of it. Uh, how, how long can you play for bec before you get really tired in this game? I th well, really tired is a, is a fluctuating thing, of course. I would say... Uh, you do one match, you feel, ah, it's, I feel like the same as an intense Smash Bros session. Your, your, your heart pulse is a bit high, you feel a bit of those tinglings of adrenaline starting to flow. By the third or fourth match, you feel that little tingly of uh, sweat appearing on your back. <laughs> and most people, by the tenth match, they are panting. They yeah. are, <sighs> you are <laughs> exhausted and you, and you need to, to do a, a switch sides kind of pose as in yeah. tennis. Uh, I think it's interesting here that to, to imagine that somebody with a better physical condition gets that advantage, but because it's still a game, a gamer will have another type of advantage. Let's say we, we've had some of the teams, uh, people who spend more play, time playing League of Legends than tennis, mm -hmm. and then we have the reverse profile as well, and we see they, they, they compete with each other on different grounds. And so that it's interesting to see that both the tactical, the quick thinking, the, the anticipations that gamers are so good at, so can be balanced a bit by the physicality where maybe they've been a bit lacking. And it's, and it's a joy to see those two worlds interact in, in, a, in this new wave of sports that makes, yeah, that where the body starts to matter. Yeah, and I think that uh, game designers need to use our ability to make things very addicting and, and very uh, alluring uh, and, and make people do things that they should be doing. And, and sports is one of these things where your body just feels so much better if, if you're moving every now and then. And uh, yeah, this is going to be really fun to see this game coming out and, and uh, meeting an audience and, and see how it, how it performs in the wild. You know, there, there is the... The, the health benefits for sure but as game makers body movements are so reinforcing the fun perception because your all your senses get more alert from the adrenaline in flow the the heart rate makes your i don't know how to say your excitement feels so more vibrant yeah but i think it's helping us also in reverse it's mm -hmm. not only games helping the health it's also your health helping the gamers feel that excitement Again, like the first time I, 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 I went and played VR games that have some of the components we, mm. of the games we're working, suddenly I felt something, this vibrancy, this vibrant feeling. I, I haven't felt that in a long time. You can, as you grow old, you can bet, start feeling a bit jaded. It takes something really exceptional to make you feel amazed like a kid. And I think whilst you're moving, your brain is no you're enjoying this telling you that so much more strongly so yeah. it's interesting to have that that reverse kick as well yeah yeah absolutely and I, I recognize that very strongly when when the nintendo wii came and they had this wii sports game and you all of a sudden were playing with your were family friend you don't need a lot of movements in order to kind of reinforce that feeling of mm. competition and and just get you really energized and and that's an aspect 
that I think games haven't explored that much. I mean, the the Nintendo Wii helped with the motion stick, but it didn't really become a sustainable phenomena. But with VR, I definitely think that we have it here because we ha we're now tracking hands and, and you're gonna move them around quite a lot. And eventually I think we're gonna get to, to better body, uh, body tracking as well. Well, uh, with that said, thank you very much. Uh, we look forward to see uh, what's gonna show up on the rest of the conference. Thank you. Remember, never stay still. See you soon in Blasto. <laughs>
And um, uh, one of the days that Oculus reached out, um, we found out that we had a bundle coming up, uh, which usually is something that uh, you never know who's the, who's the other person that, or who's the other title you, you, you're going to be um, bundled with. Um, and since we were in a close relationship, we found out that we were going to be together in the bundle <laughs> during the same week. Work there. Exactly. <laughs> Which is something that in the beginning was uh, a, a bit scary, but uh, we talked to our uh, account managers. Uh, they confirmed it on their end, and we thought, hey, so this is a great opportunity actually uh, to do something not only for the sake of our titles, but for the sake of our both communities since we share, uh, we share so much. Uh, so it's, it was in June, I believe. Um, and we didn't have, how long did we have? I think it was days, it was like a week, maybe <laughs> less. It was so crazy. It, it was super, a super short amount of time. Um, so we brainstormed and we decided, okay, so why don't we um, create a competition, a social competition? Uh, we license one, one song from the same artist for both, uh, both games. Uh, we had to move super quickly because licensing is also something that usually takes uh, a long time. Uh, and thank, thank goodness for Jamie Berry. He, he really stepped up there. We're like, Jamie, we need you. <laughs> yes. He was super quick to react. I don't know what, yeah. we, would have, uh, nice. what we would have done uh, if he didn't react so fast. Uh, so that, that was a great opportunity. We also, um, another tip that we got from Oculus, which I think is, is, is quite important, was not only make the, the development and the social work, but also the visual work where um, uh, especially Avon took it uh, this time. Uh, we worked together on, on similar assets and we worked together also on the PR assets that um, some, some places, uh, some websites were sharing. Also Oculus uh, shared our trailer, uh, shared the, the blog post as well with, with the joint uh, visuals. And that really wrapped up a very nice collaboration, I would say, right? Yeah. And we collaborated with our account managers. I want to give a shout out to Michael and William if they ever see this. <laughs> yes. They were great. Exactly. We, we got also uh, very close to them and they were thrilled when they found out that actually two developers are, are working together, which we're supposed to be competing actually um, uh, because we are on the same space and we actually are sharing uh, the similar target audience. Um, and, and they got a very good, uh, response from the marketing team at Oculus because it was the first time that this was going to be done um, and certainly not the last one. Um, so that was super positive when, when, when we did it. So yeah. I um, loved also how our mappers, like they, even though the games are different, they, they try to make the map as close to each other as possible. And, and it that is true. Parts. That was yes, great. They were synchronized um, whenever they were designing the, the map. Um, they they got in a chat. They first decided, okay, what's the style, and then they shared the videos of the gameplays to uh, also be able to match some of the um, some of the transitions. Because even though the game the games are visually different, uh, some of the poses are very similar, and some of the transitions can 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 be uh, quite like quite quite alike. Uh, I'd say so. Yeah, that was yeah. awesome. Yeah, so I mean, deceptively simple, right? One song, you'd figure it's pretty easy, but to get two teams, and I love the way you guys, like we, we're, we are good improvisers and, you know, we're entrepreneurial and, and we're out there making calls. And I, I know we made all sorts of small decisions uh, or, or rather big decisions in, in, in a timely manner. And we're like, hey, what do you think about this? And, and you guys pretty much said yes to everything, which made it super easy to work with. I mean, I, mean, I, I think the, the both uh, studios have, are, are lucky for, for this kind of um, uh, collaborations to be small and, and we're eager to, to deliver whatever is, is new and exciting. And, and we also have our roadmaps are very, very tight, but also are very flexible because we do not want to miss any opportunities that, that will make our games get uh, one step further, I'd say. Yeah, yeah yes. that's right. That's right. And we were, we were also open about each other's ideas. Like you guys are very good at social media, so we, we admire you for that. So you kind of took that on. And I yeah. even love to do the graphics for both titles. And you were like, okay, no worries. <laughs> so, I mean, I exactly. think that kind of flexibility makes for great collaboration. Like we, we yes. open each other's 
uh, toolkits. It did. It, it, it actually now feels like uh, one team because yeah. I mean, after the good experience uh, that we had with the first collaboration, uh, we also prepared something that we saw that it was interesting in both teams' roadmaps, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. And that's how, and that's how, and then we, we got into the, the VR fitness summit, uh, and, and Ryan said like, can you guys collab again? And we're like, yes, <laughs> let's do it. Yes, exactly. This time we had uh, a few more weeks, which, uh, actually yeah, was yeah. nice, nice to have. It was very relaxed, uh, compare in comparison. <laughs> yes. And, and for this time, we, we also had, uh, we did the same, I, I'd say we, we did the same, we followed the same uh, steps, uh, which was super cool uh, to see how the two artists, Avon and, and, and Matthias from, from our team, uh, were working together on the same visual with, with the Monster Cat um, cover for Fool, Carry On, that's the, that's the song we did. Uh, but th there's a big mask, so we put. I hope we can we can put the images <laughs> somewhere here. We we put the the mask uh, that Matthias modeled uh, on both of the covers, and that whenever you put the two games together, it looks it looks amazing. And right away, the users can 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 see that both titles they have something in common, which I think that for the store presence that that is key, right? That's right. That's right. And we got to give our, our, in our, for our tournaments, we got to give our players like a play this song for the first time live on the finals, which was really fun to watch. Yes. Uh, that was cool too. Exactly. Because that, there was some hype um, where when we announced that we were collabing together, we we're part of the VR Fitness Summit. We had uh, the competitions where we're, we're going on uh, weeks before with the qualifications. Uh, so for the final, it, it was super special to have the, the very same song uh, be competed in, in both games, and also with a joint um, with a joint prize, yeah. the, the joint pool prize, uh, because both both games had individual ones. But for this, we wanted to make it more special uh, and and have a winner get uh, get to compete on both games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think the other nice thing about the summit, and many people might not know this, but you know the depths. Uh, Val has done a great job of putting all of the devs together in, uh, on Discord and we, we chat and it just gets the community together. Um, so I, I love all this spirit of collaboration as we build VR together. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm excited. We, we, we also launched the, the VR, VR Fitness Bundle, which is coming, coming to an end very soon, uh, but we're coming up with a new one. So we've learned other developers, are, they're, they're open to these things. And I think uh, you know, I, I encourage everybody who's watching this to not shy away from if you like collaborations and if you like us to collaborate, feel free to uh, keep voicing that and let, let us know and let us know who else you want us to collaborate with. Uh, I think we're, we're, on, we're on search for more, for more friends here right. to do more interesting things. The, the, the good thing, uh, because I, I, again, we're a bit younger uh, than you guys. You're more experienced and you have guided us a lot. Uh, but also we found out from the very beginning that most developers are super open to to share tips uh to help you out to if you need a uh, consultancy or even uh you ask hey how was your experience when doing this because at every point whenever you're developing a game uh you need to make it strategic decisions uh and everyone that uh i spoke with they, they were super open at okay this is a good call for you or our experience was good when we made this call uh, we think that you could have a positive return when you do that, or maybe that's not something that uh, should be prioritized for you. And that, I think that's super helpful, even though not everything will end up in a call-up, uh, but even these kind of uh, conversations and interactions are super valuable. So never shy away uh, from contacting uh, other titles. Yeah, that's right. And, and if you want to put us together, uh, you're more than welcome. We're, we're open and we're looking and we just want to, find ways to move this medium forward. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Correct. <laughs> because in the end, we are all uh, in the same space that is growing and, and it's, it's thrilling to see how, how this uh, last part of the year is, is going to turn out. And so I think now it's the time to, to try new things because space is still new. Uh, try new things, push also the platforms to, 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 um, bring you guys
further uh, merge the communities because VR users, I think they, they, they actually merge more titles than maybe a console or a PC gamer. Um, VR, they, are, they always like to explore, they like mechanics um, and, and, and anything that's related to also fitness, especially yeah. uh, during this especially period. when it comes to fitness. You don't want to just do one movement, you want to do multiple. Exactly, exactly. So you, you can, uh, that, that's another thing that uh, whenever we were speaking to, to our communities, um, they all have, okay, so I play this game, I play Synth Riders whenever I, I have this goal. Uh, then I play O Shape when, whenever I want to do this, or these days I merge this once and then I put Audica to, to finish the, the workout. And, and you see that uh, they know what is the benefit of each of the games and they merge them. So uh, whoever is playing Synth Riders is going to be valuable for O Shape and vice versa, and also for, for other games. So never shy away from uh, reaching out to other communities and, and trying to make collaborations. I think they, they are super valuable. Yeah. What, what are we going to do next time? And what's Collab 3? <laughs> <laughs> well, we do have, definitely, we do have uh, some big ideas. This is something that we want to take more time. It's not going to be just a few weeks, and it's not going to be just... Uh, We're getting serious uh, here. Exactly. Serious. So this is something that I'm not sure we can <laughs> already tease, but uh, we want to bring um, definitely more titles into the table and also make a more... <sighs> More well known, oh. impactful ah. collaboration. That's too much. I mean, how many okay. so, we, got, we got to close uh, the video I'm now. Back. I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. so that that's as far as as we can say and say. Nice. Yes. Well, thanks for watching, everybody, and uh, I hope you enjoy the VR Fitness Summit. Yes. Uh, thanks a lot uh, for taking the time to to listen to to passionate VR rhythm uh, people. And yeah, that's it. Hope you have a good one. Cheers. gentlemen, boys and girls, people that like to move and groove, welcome to the Virtual Athletics League VR Fitness Summit O-Shape Tournament Semi-Finals. We're going to see a couple of players, three to be exact, move and groove and try to get that top spot. We have Amber W. Mint, Pesky, Cashew, and Magic 1313. We're going to get right into it. I mean, there's not a whole lot of time to waste. The first song up is My Time, and here we go. So in O-Shape, let's go over a couple of basics. We have the blue walls. The blue walls are the walls that you want to go through. You have to match your body with that shape, and uh, they come at you pretty quick. I mean, I'm just watching this, and it's really hard. It looks like Amber already is up to a 4X modifier, as well as Magic. Pesky not doing so hot, a little behind on the modifier. Now the next thing up is the red walls that you see coming right now. Red walls are hit walls. you got to punch them or hit them, whatever uh, you want to call it. There's no technical name for it but you have to hit them on the beat then there's the yellow walls which are dodge walls so combined with those three mechanics you have to just you know move in your play space move your body and also keep beat so there's a lot going on and then you've got the coins little extra you know yellow golden gems those get you points um 
And they they stack on the multiplier, so you've got the combo multiplier, which goes to uh, times two when you pass four successful walls, blue walls, that is. I don't know if the red walls or the yellow walls uh, apply to that. They might. But then when you pass three successful walls, you get 3x and then 4x after that. So after you pass tw uh, 10 walls total, you'll have a 4x multiplier. These are also played with the precision modifier on, uh, which is a 1.2 modifier to the entire score. There are no speed modifiers, so the sound songs are exactly as they sound on the stream. And right now, it's looking like we've got Amber is in the lead by 50,000 points. I think I'm reading that right. The 50, yeah, 50,000. Pesky coming in last right now. Uh, he's like 200,000 behind. He's got to catch up. He's got to really hope that these top two players mess up. I mean, at this point, that's the only way he can get those points back is if they break that modifier. But it doesn't look like they're going to be doing that anytime soon. They've held this uh, 4x for... I think the... Oh, the Magic just dropped his. Now he's back to 3x. Amber definitely raking in those points with the 4x. Basically, the entire song. It's looking like she's going to take the win on this first one. I'm not really sure, though. I don't actually know how long these songs go for. Pesky's trying his hardest. He's moving the most, it seems like. Uh, it doesn't seem like magic. If you're looking at the uh, plate-based cameras, is moving as much. And the final scores are Amber in first with 1.4 million. Magic with 1.3 million. And Pesky just at 1 million. And now we're moving on. The next song is 5 a.m. The, the BPM of these songs change a little bit. I, I haven't played the game in a while, so I am actually not sure what these songs uh, feel like. I do know they're playing on the hardest setting, and, you know, I can't move this fast. I'm, wa I'm trying to watch them move this fast, and I can barely keep up. So this is this is very impressive to see these people move. O-Shape is one of my favorite rhythm games, though. I do love it. And so far, Amber and Magic are up at that 4x multiplier already. Pesky, who's lagging behind. Magic just dropped his. Now he's back to three. And uh, that might not be good for him. Let's see. The scores are pretty well aligned right now. It looks like Amber is still in first. Pesky's in second. And he's been passed. He, I don't know how. I guess he wasn't getting the, uh, the, the coins, it doesn't look like, because... He had the 4x multiplier and he just dropped it. And Amber dropped hers. So people are dropping multipliers left and right here. Amber still in the lead by 10,000 points. So, no, Magic in the lead. Sorry. Magic is in the lead with uh, 80,000 points. So 10,000 point lead over Amber and a 20,000 point lead over Pesky. Almost 40,000 point lead. Or 30,000 point lead over Pesky, actually. It looks like he's running away with this one. Let's see if he can hold that multiplier for the entire song, though. Because that's really what matters in these rhythm games. Once you make one mistake, it can kind of bite you in the butt. And you, you can't come back from it, or it gets in your head. And then you have those problems where like, you just can't shake it. You can't get back in the groove. You know, you can't pause like you can in Beat Saber or whatever when you want to, you know, take a break or reset. You can't do that. So this is all, you know, live action, no stops. And it looks like... It's really hard to read the scores when they're moving so fast. It does look like Magic is winning right now with a 30,000 point lead over second. I think I just saw Amber drop two walls. She lost her multiplier. Magic lost his as well. He's down to a times two. Pesky is at a times four. But I don't think there's enough walls left to make up that point differential. He's... 30,000 points behind? That's a lot. Is it 30,000 or 300,000? How, how many points is that? 300,000 points behind. That's a lot of points. And the only person that has a multiplier right now is Magic, and he is just rolling away with that. I think he's going to cross 2... 2 million? Let's see it. Let's see it. Here we go. There we go. That's the 2 million point mark, I think. I'm trying to count the digits there. Yeah, it's 2 million points. 
Pesky's at 1.5. Amber at 1.7. This one looks like it's gonna go to magic for this one. But it is worth mentioning, this is the semi-finals. So, the top two players from this will go on and play the finals later, uh, immediately following this. So, that's also something to keep in mind. You know, you've got the um, the physicality of it all. I know we, we, you play these beat games and you start sweating. You're sweating in your headset. You're sweating in your shirt. And you just have to keep going. It looks like Pesky is actually out. I don't think he finished. I think he lost and he is out and we're gonna watch amber and magic duke it out but magic has almost 800,000 points more than amber right now so i think he's got this one in the bag the song seems to be slowing down so it might be close to the end and it doesn't look like either is gonna really drop their modifier so this is probably gonna go to magic for the second one I believe that's the last wall right there. Yes, Magic actually cracked three million on that one. And now we're going to rock this joint. I believe is the title for this one. Okay, now from the beginning. You see him going for those easy. You see a little flourish from Magic there. He played the the flute as he was standing. I like it. I like it. He's he's feeling good. He's. <laughs> I mean, that's how I would play, right? That's you know. If you're gonna do it, do it big. And it looks like he's in the lead right now by 50,000, 60,000 points. Pesky and Amber are kind of tied. Pesky's a little behind. No, he's ahead now. Pesky has passed Amber. But Magic somehow has doubled their points. I don't really know how he got that far ahead, but he's, he's basically double what they have right now. And I'm, I'm trying to see, like, are, are they just missing the... The coins? Like, what's happening? How are they? How is he so far ahead? I guess he had to have got every coin. He's per probably got a perfect right now, you know, perfect streak. And he's at 80,000, and uh, yeah, he's 30,000 points ahead of the second and third place there. Now, if you haven't played O Shape, uh, let me let let me tell you, I highly recommend it. And I'm not someone that actually really likes rhythm games, uh, but O Shape is definitely one of my favorite games. Plus, the developers are really awesome to work with. I love hanging out with them, talking with them in the Discord. They are so much fun. It looks like everybody got all those coins in that little combo there. But Pesky has dropped his modifier from the beginning. Magic still in the lead by 30,000 points or so. Pesky is dropping behind now. He's only at uh, 80, no, 800,000. Man, keep track of digits is hard. Amber is at 900,000 and Magic is at 1.2 million, 1.3 million now. His numbers are just climbing so much faster and I can't really figure out why. I guess they're not... You know, this is what I think it might be. They might be trying to go for those coins, but there's a certain point where, like, you flick your hand over there and you think you got it, and you just, you didn't. You missed it, and it's just not good. And at that point, there's nothing you can do for it, about it because you have to get your hands back in to do the next shape. So you have to, like, pull everything in really tight, really quick, and it looks like Pesky has dropped another combo. He's back at a 2x. He's only just now crossed 1 million, but... Magic is at 1.7 million and Amber is at 1.3. It's not looking good for Pesky. I think he might be the man that leaves the island. They did get all of those coins. Yes, everybody got coins. So it looks like Pesky dropped his combo again. He's only at a 2x. Now he's at a 3x. But I don't think he's going to be able to make up that point differential. He is 800,000 points below first place right now. And it looks like he dropped his combo again. Magic, it, you gotta watch, you know, I, I don't want to watch the game. I want to watch him. He is enjoying this. He is fully in this game. He's loving it. I mean, you can tell by the movements, the flourishes. He's not stiff. He's not, he's not like, I have to get this. I have to get this. It's, it's I'm playing to have fun, and I'm going to do well while I do it. Now, Amber is using the live avatar, which is also a really cool way to showcase this game. Uh, you get this third-person view, but... 
And that's the end of the semifinals, and it looks like Magic took that one as well. And Pesky, I believe, is out. Now we're going on to the finals. First song up is Delight. And I think I was wrong earlier when I said that the, uh, the modifier for Precision was on. I think the Precision modifier is only on now for the finals. I don't think it was on in the semifinals. So this is going to get even tougher. And as you can see, Amber's missing a couple. You see that red flash on the screen? That's, when, that's what happens when you miss a wall. And it's looking like Magic is ahead, pulling away slowly but surely. They both have the 4x multiplier, so it's whoever misses first is going to, you know, kind of affect this. And there it is. Amber missed hers. She's back to the 2x multiplier, and she's down on points. She's missed a bunch of walls. Magic did miss one. He was down on the 3x multiplier, so I know he had to reset. But, yeah, man, these are so hard. I can't I cannot explain to you how fast these people are actually moving. I mean, you can see it in the camera, but it's it doesn't do it justice. Uh, you're moving around like a mad lad is when you're doing this and these walls are coming at you. And the biggest thing I've noticed is it's really hard to tell what the next wall is. I mean, you can kind of see it, but you've only got so much time between each wall to adjust. And I don't I don't have the BPMs for these songs, but you can tell this one's a little chiller. I do appreciate this song. I like this song a lot. Uh, this, this is my thing, Electro Swing, I love it. It's, it's a great addition to rhythm games. Now we've got Magic right now at uh, 800,000 and Amber at 600,000. If she can't keep her combo, she will not be able to continue this because she is way behind and Magic is not really dropping. I think he's only dropped like one or two combos all night. He is doing really, really well. And I can see why he's a finalist for sure. Not to say that Amber isn't doing well. She's doing better than I could for sure. And they are the two finalists. These are the top two players in the Val Fitness Summit O'Shea Tournament. We've got a 400,000 point discrepancy right here. So I don't really know... Unless magic kind of bombs a set of walls, there is a, a life bar at the bottom where if you miss, you know, just like in Beat Saber and other games, if you miss, you slowly lose health. And then once you miss too many, your health runs out, you die or you lose or whatever. You end, the, the, the song ends. That's what happened to Pesky in the semis on song number two, I think. So that does happen. But it doesn't look like either of these are really either of these players are really gonna have to worry about that health bar. They're really just having to worry about getting those points as high as they can. And you know, right now, Magic has a 500,000 point lead. So it's looking like he's gonna do pretty well here. And there's only one more song to go, so I don't know if uh, I don't know if Amber can come back from that. I'm not exactly sure. It's got to be by points. Because there's only two songs. So it has to be a point win. So if he pulls away hard enough on this one, he doesn't even have to pull away that hard on the next one. He is 500,000 points ahead right now. Look at those movements. Look at look at those arms, man. I, I just can't follow it. I can barely follow what's going on on the screen. And, you know... <laughs> It does look like Amber has slowed down a bit. She's not moving as much. Magic is really getting into it more and more as the night goes on, and Amber seems to be getting into it less and less. And I think that that difference is going to be what's going to cost her. Magic now 2.2 million on his score. Amber at 1.6. Final song, Carry On. Let's see who gets the modifiers. I think Amber just missed a wall. You saw that red flash. So she is behind on the modifier. She just missed again. But so did Magic. They're both reset on their modifiers. They're at times two now. Both at times three now. Amber's at times four first. But still behind in points. Magic is getting those points back faster. And he's at a 4x again. And not dropping it at all. It doesn't seem like he's missing any of these points he doesn't want to give up anything and he's getting all of these coins as far as I can tell too it's a risky move too if you try and go for a coin and you miss a wall it hurts you more than if you were to 
just let the coin go because the coins don't reset your combo. The walls do. So, oh, there's a reset for both of them. Apparently, that was a very hard section. Got all those uh, quick beat coins right there. Both players at 4x. We've got 500. Oh, they're really close. They're both in the 500,000 range. Actually, Amber's ahead now. 600,000 for Amber. She's pulling ahead. She's got a 50,000 point lead right now. Sorry, that's wrong. She has a 60,000 point lead now. And Cly oh no, how did he get back so fast? She, oh, Amber dropped her combo. That's what happened. She is back down to a zero. And Magic is rolling away right past her with that combo. He's still got that 4X on those little hard spots of the map. Those resets really kill you because if you get if you get reset right there where it's like a quick beat, 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 and that multiplier would just help you so much more and carry you right through. And it looks like Magic hasn't dropped it. He's still back at his 4X after that. Amber is back at a 4X as well, but she is now 200,000 behind. There's a minute 45 left in the song. All of these coins are important. These are helping with the modifier. Hit wall, dodge, dodge. Oh, and a missed dodge, it looks like, from Amber. And a missed set. Multiplier reset there. But it looks like Magic also reset. He's down to 3x, so he definitely had a reset. Oh, Amber had another reset. It's not looking good. She's at 1.3 million, and Magic is at 1.6. A minute left, 60 seconds in the song. Are there enough walls, and will Magic mess up? Or is he going to take the crown? 1.4 to 1.8. 400,000 points behind. Amber needs something to go wrong on Magic's side. It doesn't look like he's slowing down at all. He looks like he's loving it. He's he's totally into this. I wonder what his AC in his house is set to right now. I wonder how cold he has his play space. Because I know when I play this, man, I got to crank it down like 10 degrees. It just gets so hot. Both the players back at a 4X. Oh, no, it looks like Amber did reset. Lost that multiplier, and I don't think that's going to help her. I don't think she can come back from that. 1.6 million to 2.1 million. Nine seconds left. Oh, Magic did. He did a reset. 2.2 million. Amber can push. No, she cannot. And it looks like Magic with 2.3 million and two final songs is the winner. Thanks, everybody, for coming. Magic 1313 is your Virtual Athletics League VR Fitness Summit O'Shea Champion.